there's nothing like a nice breath of fresh air. It really feels good. And that's because our cells in our body, they need oxygen to survive. We breathe oxygen, which is taken to every cell in our body. We want to do more to survive, though. We want to thrive. Adding extra oxygen to your cells can help your immune system. It can actually strengthen your internal organs, help heal your body from many different diseases. Having cells at full strength can really help during this time of COVID. Okay, so during this COVID-1984 pandemic, when Big Brother says we have to wear a mask everywhere, there's a good chance that we're not getting that oxygen we need at the cellular level, but the masks right now, well, they're not an option. So we can help replenish that oxygen by drinking some oxygen into our body. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now, okay? You'll use a liquid solution of sodium chloride. Now you might be thinking, sodium chloride, isn't that just table salt? Yeah, you're thinking of sodium chloride. Chemical formula, NaCl. But I'm not talking about sodium chloride. I'm talking about sodium chloride. <laughs> ends with a T-E, not a D-E, okay? The, chemula, the chemical formula for sodium Chloride is NaClO2. These are salt molecules with an oxygen molecule. That's the O2 attached to each of them. The key is to get that O2, the oxygen molecule, into the water you drink. I will demonstrate how this can be done in this video. But first, let's look at the materials you'll need to get started. You'll need to order a little bottle of sodium chloride and you'll need to have an acid, which is an activator. And the acid can either be um, hydrochloric acid or it can be uh, citric acid. Now in this demonstration, I'll use citric acid, okay? And here's a little picture showing you how you can order this on Amazon. These are called, from the company called Oneness Drops, two part liquid plastic, it's called. And it's $50, I'll just say this. The, the, there's several of these available. They look the same, the same little brand by different companies that sell them, and they range from 45 to about $60. And every one of them has little two ounce bottles they sell. But I was going through and I looked at this one, I was like, wait a minute, these are four ounce bottles. So for $50, you get a four ounce bottle of each rather than the two ounce bottle of each was really a good deal. So this is the one you should take, okay? Um, so you also will need distilled water. Um, you can buy a, a gallon of this, okay, anywhere. You'll need a measuring cup, which is marked off in milliliters. I have a 1,000 milliliter measuring cup, and I'm going to use it to measure off 500 milliliters. A little 5 milliliter syringe. And a large container that holds 1,000 milliliters and has a lid that seals and it should not have a metal that has to be plastic and you'll also need a small container now the small container should fit inside of a large container and it should fit inside in such a way that the contents in the small one will not mix with the water that's poured into the large one because your 500 milliliters of water is going into the larger container and then the citric acid and the sodium chloride mixture will go in the bottom of the little container which will sit inside and you can't have that tipping or spilling or splashing over so the water can't splash into the mixture and the mixture can't splash into the water okay and you'll see more about this as I demonstrate so are you ready let's go ahead and look at the demonstration okay so you will need the jar with a lid that can seal okay clamp down and seal close this holds a thousand milliliters and a little jar that will fit inside, okay? Now when you put this jar inside, you will have maybe up to about here, there'll be some uh, chemical mixture, okay? And inside of this jar that holds a thousand milliliters, we're going to fill it up with 500 milliliters of water, of distilled water. And it's important that the jar that goes inside, notice that it, it won't tip very far, okay, because what's in the bottom of here 
cannot splash into the water and the water cannot splash into here. The two cannot mix during this process. Okay, that's very important. And so what we'll do is put what 500 milliliters of distilled water. So here we have distilled water. We'll put 500 milliliters into the 1,000 milliliter container. So here we go, and we have it right at 500 milliliters. We pour that in. And now we have the two, the citric acid and the sodium chloride. We're going to put 10 milliliters of each into this. Okay, and I have a little syringe that is a five milliliter syringe, so of course I'm going to have to um, fill it twice. Okay, now one of the problems I end up with is that the syringe is not going to go into here. Okay, so to make this work, I have to take the little Part out, okay, and then holding my finger over the bottom of this, make sure you can see this on the camera here, holding my finger over the bottom so it doesn't come out, I'm going to pour in five milliliters right in there, and then five more. Okay, and now I do the other bottle. Let's have five milliliters of this one and five more coming up. Let's get it open. Okay, and I do five milliliters. And you'll see that it's starting to turn like a yellow color. Okay. it mixes and five more you can notice how it's turned yellow it goes right into here now see it it'll tilt but the water doesn't come over the top okay and it doesn't come out because these two cannot mix okay and what I'll do with this is I'm going to take it to a cupboard and put it into the cupboard and just close the door, the dark cupboard, and leave it for 12 hours, okay? And after that 12 hours, I'll take it out of the cupboard and put it in the refrigerator for about an hour to get it cool. Because when we open it up to do the next stage, we don't want the oxygen to come out from the water. And if it's cold, it releases a lot less oxygen, okay? So it's going to the cupboard, and I'll just take a picture of that in just a moment. Okay, so back to the cupboard we go for probably a little more than 12 hours this time. Okay, so we've had the mixture inside of the water container for 12 hours in the cupboard, and now it's time to take it to the refrigerator. So we're going to take it out, carefully not to jiggle it around. Remember, we don't want any water to splash into the mixture. We don't need the mixture to splash out into the water. As you look at it, you can see that it's now like a nice yellow tint. Okay, so I'm off to the refrigerator. Okay, and here we are at the refrigerator. And we will simply put it inside. now wait about one hour 
and then we were going to do the whole process again, make another mixture and put it in the little container inside, let it sit 12 hours, another hour in the refrigerator, as the water absorbs the more oxygen. So we will be back with you in about an hour. Okay, now a little more than an hour has gone by, so it's time to take this out of the refrigerator and go on to the next 12 hour cycle. So, here we go, and I'll see you over the counter. Okay, so for this next step, when I open this up um, and take the little jar out from inside the large one, you don't really want to breathe. This is a very powerful gas. You don't really want to breathe this in. You could actually hurt yourself. So many people do one of two things. We could take the whole jar outside and take the little one out from the other one and dispose of it. Or if I do it indoors, which I'm going to do, I will um, put this in the tank for my toilet because it's a good cleaner and, and it works well. But what I'll do is I'll take the jar out and I will hold my breath until I get this dumped out so I don't, I don't want to breathe this in at all. So you really need to be careful. This, this can be very bad if you to breathe in a lot of it. And you can, you can hurt yourself. So Either do this outside or hold your breath while you're disposing of it. Okay, let me get a deep breath here. And then I'll open this up. Close it. Go to dispose of this. I'm back, okay. And we'll do the same thing we did when we first started. Have the two little containers, the sulfuric acid and the sodium chloride. And I will put 10 milliliters of each in here, assuming that I have enough, which is questionable. If I don't have enough, we're going to just have to make it a little not as strong as I want. Okay, so it just comes up a little short, but that's okay. It's okay, we'll have a good drink anyway. And probably the same with the other one. It'll come up a little short. And we shall not be discouraged, okay? We'll just be okay with that. That's going to be okay, don't worry. It's not quite 10 milliliters, but it'll be good. Okay, so this is going back into the jar where we can have some more oxygen absorbed into the water. And it's going into the cupboard now. And I think that because it came out just a little tiny bit short of the 10 milliliters of each. I'm going to leave it in the cupboard maybe a little bit more than 12 hours so it can absorb a little and, uh, and it should be fine. I think we're still going to have a real good mixture here. So into the cupboard we're going with it. Okay, so back to the cupboard we go for probably a little more than 12 hours this time. And you see that it's very dark. The little spot that's inside the little bottle, it's very dark right now as it was last time. And by the time we took it out, it was very light because a lot of what is in here, the oxygen is being absorbed out as a gas and the water is absorbing it in as a gas. You don't want the liquid to ever get mixed directly into there. This is very powerful, very strong, and you can hurt yourself if you do this wrong. So never have a container that might tip a little too much or that might be a little too low so the water could splash over, go back and forth. That would be not good. Okay, so here we go, 12 hours, it'll be in there all night as I sleep, and in the morning I will finish off this little project. Okay. Okay, so once again it's time to take the uh, mixture we have, the water, out from the cupboard. And in 
into the refrigerator and you can see that it's a nice yellow color now. So I'll meet you at the fridge. Okay, so into the refrigerator it goes. And there it will stay for maybe an hour or so until it's cold and then we will finish this process off. Okay, it's time to take this out of the refrigerator again so we can finish this process off. Okay, so it's time to open this and dispose of the chemicals in the smaller container. And once again, I remind you, either do this outside in open air or else make sure that you hold your breath as you dispose of it. Again, I normally dump mine into the commode tank behind my toilet, and it's a good way, it's a clean, cleans, but as I take it from here to there, I'm not going to breathe at all, okay? So I shall be back in just a moment. I'm not going to be able to talk for a couple of minutes. You notice that I immediately I close this back up after I took the smaller container out because you want to make sure the oxygen doesn't escape. That's why we keep it cold, it, it escapes less, but as much as possible keep it closed. I have two, excuse me, I have two glass bottles here. Tinted glass, first of all, green tint or brown tint normally you can find. And plastic tops, do not use a metal top, it will destroy this whole process. Okay, now I'll use a funnel. Okay. I un take the lids off of both of them. And I'm going to pour this in here and then I will store this in the refrigerator. Okay. Here we go. I'd like to close it as soon as I can, okay? I think two bottles is better than one larger one because every time you open it and close it, there is a little tiny bit of oxygen that escapes. And this way you're using half of it and then you have another one that none of it has escaped. Whereas if you're using the same big bottle the whole time, by the time you get to the end, you'll have a lot more oxygen that has gotten away and it'll be a less potent mixture. So let's put it in here. See how this works. Oopsie. I may need to put a little more in the other one. That's not what I wanted to do, but it's I think it's necessary. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go off and put these in the refrigerator. Okay, so how do you use this a mixture you put together now on a day-to-day -day basis? And what we do is we will add it to the water that we drink, okay? So I have a bottle, two of them actually, that I've measured out 500 milliliters, a half liter of water. And what I'm going to do is put five milliliters of the mixture into each bottle, okay? If you want, you can just take a typical bottle of water like you buy in the store. This one actually is a 500 milliliter bottle. Some of them say 16 ounces, which leaves you just a little tiny bit under 500 milliliters, but it's close enough. You can do that. I keep these in the refrigerator ahead of time, so I get the water cold because the whole key to making this work is always keep it cold. The mixture's kept in the refrigerator, okay? because if it's warm and you open it, a lot of the oxygen will get released into the air and then it won't be there for you to consume and for your cells to take advantage of. So you keep it cold, okay? And the process we use it is this. That we take the bottle of water and we add five milliliters to this bottle of water 
and then drink it slowly, taking about three sips every um, 15 minutes or so, okay? And at that pace, you'll probably finish it in three and a half to four hours, okay? So let's go ahead and make the solution first, and I'll tell you more about this. Okay, we're going to put the, I put the bottle into a little solid like beer mug here so it doesn't tip, okay, because it could tip. I'm making two, okay, two bottles. Um, by the way, you're going to do this twice a day, okay, so you're, when you finish one, you're going to do another bottle. So you're using five milliliters and five, so you, that's basically 10 milliliters a day. And remember, we made 500 milliliters of the solution. So 500 milliliters at 10 milliliters a day. This will last you 50 days if it's one person. Now, this is my wife and I. Okay, so we're using a total of 20 milliliters a day. So for us, because there's two of us, instead of 50 days, we will finish it up in 25. Okay? So let's do a little mixture. And then we'll talk about some more things that we have to consider. Okay, I opened both bottles. And now, with this little syringe, which happens to hold five milliliters, so I'll just fill the syringe up. Okay, and then take in a little splash, and then I close it up. Okay, close it up as fast as I can. And the other one, okay. And I forgot I wanted to put it in here. Like, probably it's not like that important, but just being precautious. Okay. So we have them ready, okay, and then I cover this up, and then just a couple minutes, these are going right back into the refrigerator, okay? So here's what we do, okay? When you drink this water, taking your sips, slowly finishing it over time, you don't even start until after an hour has gone by after your meal, okay? So if you get up and have breakfast, you're kind of watching the clock. You say, okay, I'm finished with my breakfast at 9 in the morning. I can start my water at 10. Okay? And at whatever point you want to eat, you stop the water and wait an hour before that meal. Okay, when you finish that meal, you wait another hour before you continue. And it really works well because with the bottles because what we do is have our breakfast, wait an hour and start the bottle, okay? When we finish the bottle, we say, okay, now we're going to have a meal before we start our next bottle. Because what that allows me to do is refill the bottles with water and let them be getting cold as we're going through our time of eating our meal, okay? So we wait an hour, and during that hour, the meal prep is done, get the meal ready and everything. Have a nice meal. Meal ends, you look at the clock, okay, and, and let's wait an hour and we can start the water again. And then again, you do the whole second bottle the whole same way. You add your five milliliters each bottle and you do the second bottle, okay. From some of the research that I've heard about and been told by people who know more about this than I do, if you take anything that's a uh, strong antioxidant, you should wait four hours before starting the drink. Uh, the strong antioxidant will negate the effects of this. It'll basically, you know, they'll like kind of cancel each other out. So the antioxidant won't be as good, nor will the oxygen water. So, uh, for example, apple juice is a strong antioxidant. So after you take a glass of apple juice in the morning, if that's what you would choose to do, you have to wait four hours before you can start the drink. Um, or uh, this drink that my wife and I take called Ningxia Red, 
We used to take it with breakfast. Well, that meant after breakfast, we're four hours before we can start our drink. And we would be eating our second meal of the day fairly late in the day and then going into the one in the morning and stuff, trying to finish the second bottle and, and, and then still kind of hungry, hadn't had our third meal, it got kind of crazy. So now what we do is before six in the morning, we drink our nature red. If we're going to have breakfast at nine or whatever, it doesn't matter. We get up early just to take the nature red. That way we have breakfast a couple hours later, you know, whatever. And, and we are able to still start right in an hour after breakfast with our water. And now we're able to finish it, you know, 10 at night or sometimes 11 at night, you know, it depends. Oh, one more thing. Okay, you want to keep it cold. So you might think, oh, well, you know, I have to stay home all the time so I can go to that refrigerator and get that water every 15 minutes. And I set my timer on my phone so it beeps. So you got beep, 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 and you go get your water. And you know, it's like you're a slave to this little schedule. But if you want to go anywhere, just get a cooler, a little small cooler, a little ice pack, and put the water in the cooler so it keeps it cold, and just go and do whatever you want, okay? Set the timer on your phone if you want to to remind you that you know, every 14 or 15 minutes, get that sip of water. Otherwise, you'll forget. And an hour later, it's, oh, I forgot to drink my water. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's taking you like, you know, six or seven hours to finish your first bottle. That's when you get into your three or four in the morning trying to finish. That you don't want that. So just be, it, it does force you to have some discipline. And that's always a good thing as long as it's not like excessive you know, have some discipline so whenever my wife and I go out we prepare a cooler about this size for the two of us and I fill these little cranberry bottles just fill them with water and put them in the freezer so they freeze and I have three of them right now and this works better than trying to put ice or ice cubes or bags of ice I just fill these up and then they go into the little cooler here and then the water bottles which is empty now but it'll I just got done we just finished drinking it they fit right into the cooler both bottles and then I do have one little bag of ice and it just fits right in there and we just take it with us and continue setting the timer and go about ouch, go about our business wherever we go I just got stabbed by a cactus <laughs> and so it works real well, so you don't have to be stuck in your home when you're doing this at all. You get out and, and, and you get used to this. At first it seems hard. You know, every 15 minutes you got to sip the water and you're not used to being on a schedule. Well, you adjust right away and, and pretty soon it's just like, okay, you know, you just do it and, and it doesn't even interfere with your life. Okay. So try it out. Um, at first, you know, it's, it seems like you got to get used to it. Once you're used, it's just that you, do, you get used to doing it every day and it just fits in your schedule and it's no big deal. So try it out and what you may find out is you'll have lots of happy cells in your body. Okay, and so, you know, enjoy, enjoy it. Let me know what you think. You can put, you know, comments in the comment column here for the video and, and I can, or any suggestions you have, maybe ways that you do it that helps you run your schedule more smoothly, you know, we can all learn. Okay, well anyway, blessings. Okay, thank you for watching this.